All right, pimps, you already know what it is. It is time to discuss the next batch of unique equipments in batch seven. And so honestly, in a nutshell, this batch is going to be very, very painful for a lot of us, especially the ones who are very much into PVP. And so with that said, Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. This is a Princess Connect video. We are going to dive into the seventh batch of UEs. We're going to talk about every single one of these. And today we are not going to be a spreadsheet hero. I actually have some footage. Uh, that's me searching it up. I have some footage of the actual UEs in action. And so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get on with the content, starting off with Kyoka, which is an incredibly cracked, unique equipment. So for Kyoka, her skill one is Ice Lance. I'm pretty sure most of you will recognize it. She goes like, watching, And then a whole bunch of ice bolts actually like get inflicted onto the enemy. And so for her Ice Lance skill one, it is going to go from 190% damage up to 270% damage, which is quite significant. But not only that, it's going to allow for a four time crit damage multiplier. And one thing I do want to mention is that at this point in the game, it is quite rare to have like crit damage additions. So I can't actually remember like any units right now that have plus crit damage buffs. But for her UE to just like simply double her crit damage on the first skill, that's honestly really insane. And so with that combined with her stat gain from the UE attack 216 up to 656 with the crit ending at 135, that is honestly probably one of the most fantastic damaging UEs that there could be. And so in terms of craft and level priority, certainly a high for both. However, 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 if you guys do like to play some PvP, I would actually turn that level down to a little bit lower so that you can pick up the Mimi and Misaki. Because as you'll see very, very soon, they are extremely impactful. And so that is a great segue into the Mimi UE, where she will be dealing with her skill one, 195 up to 250% damage. And this part, my guys, is where it gets really cracked. It goes from single target damage to an AOE with 500 range with the first enemy centered. So what that means is that she finds the first enemy and then 500 backwards and 500 forwards, she will deal massive amounts of damage to them. And then on top of that, she is also going to permanently move to 300 range away from the target. So she has actually moved closer. Now, I wanna show you a clip it's uh, this one right here. And this is a little bit of a sneak peek of the ReZero event. As you can see, we've got, uh, what's his name again? Beetlejuice from season one. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow down this clip so you can see exactly what is happening. But I believe Mimi is about to use her UE skill one and you're gonna see this multi-target boss. I forgot to mention, Beetlejuice is a multi-target boss. You're gonna see him take an insane amount of damage. So let's go ahead. Yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. And she's gonna go clap him. Bam. Three damage numbers. Two, eight, three, nine, four, two, zero, three, one, six, and five, two, eight, four. That is freaking insane. So just on her skill one, she dealt that's what, like 50k damage? And so with that, you can imagine that it's gonna do a crazy amount of work in PvP, which is what I'm about to show you right now. And so I'm just gonna do the same thing, playback speed down to 0.25. Mimi is just using her jumpy buff now, so she is actually going to get the attack buff before she is going to go ahead and do the massive AOE. And she got pulled in front because of Tsumiki. So that's not her own move in doing that. And she's gonna do the hoppity hoppity. She's gonna jump and slam. Bam! You see all those numbers. 15567-9708-4156-4209. She has actually just absolutely demolished the back line. And combining this cleave capability with H Shinobu, Halloween Shinobu, as well as Mitsuki and Monica, you can see that the Halloween Shinobu on the other side has instantly died. And so that, my guys, showcases the capabilities of Mimi UE in both PvE and PvP you gotta get her. However, on the other hand, in terms of leveling, medium level priority, yeah, that's fair enough, especially because the attack and crit stats are very, very good. The accuracy is nice, however, it doesn't scale, so in terms of level priority, that's not gonna affect that. And so with that, I hope that convinces you that Mimi's UE is pretty cracked out. And thus, let's move on to Misaki. Now, Misaki is a little bit more niche where she is primarily for PvP, 100% agree with this assessment. And so what she does, 
does is she's essentially getting the Mimi treatment, where her previously single target skill is becoming AoE with 200 range. And that AoE skill is actually going to be doubling in damage from 95 up to 190%. Now, here is the thing that really makes it super good. Debuffs their action speed by 35% with the UE with 10 seconds. And then before I actually get into the video, you'll see down here she is getting attack and crit. So in terms of level priority, it's quite nice. However, again, I would say make sure you can craft all three of these, Kyoka, Mimi, and Misaki. And depending on how you feel, maybe Miyako and Ilya as well. Or you could go back to finish off some of the ones that you did miss. However, my guys, now it is time to demonstrate Misaki's prowess. I'm going to show you guys this clip right here. And she is going to use that skill one, that cursed skill one. I'm going to go to 0.5. And then I'm going to scroll back a little bit. And you can see, oh my god, look at that. One mil damage just from Misaki is actually utterly insane. So let's go ahead and click into the arena. We are going to run in and Misaki is going to essentially make everybody blue like this song. And so she's going to fire off that bolt and that bolt is going to hit and everybody is blue with their action speeds slowed down. And that is just tragedy. That is just absolutely tragic. We've got the Misaki UB going off. It is going to deal a ton of damage. Bam, 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 bam. Nobody said Misaki was bad. She just wasn't that good before, and now she is absolutely cracked. And so my guys, in a nutshell, what you are seeing here is a Turbo Misaki. So we've got the Yukari, we've got the Monika, we've got the Misaki, and the Yuki. This setup is just to make Misaki go ultra, ultra giga fast so that she can burn down the enemy team. You can see we've got some charm over there. This honestly, it's already freaking game over. However, with that demonstration, hopefully you will understand how cracked out Misaki's UE is for PvP. And so with that, let's move on to the next unit. We've got Miyako. So she is going to be quite annoying, although we do have a mage meta right now and a cleave meta. So for Miyako, her invincibility for 3.99 seconds is going to stay the same. She's not going to get any more seconds, but she is going to, with her UE, increase P defense by 120, which is quite significant, and the dodge by 10. However, it's not like it's crazy, crazy cracked. The really, really great part about Miyako's UE is her stats from the UE itself. So 17, 14 HP, 68 P def, 23 M def and 23 dodge. It's really the 23 dodge combining with the 10 dodge up here that is going to make Miyako a dodging machine again. And so therefore with this unique equipment, she is going to become, I wouldn't call her unkillable again because we actually do have a lot of tools these days to deal with her, but she is certainly going to be very, very annoying. Very similar to how Kuka, when she got her UE, she heals 20%. Like that is quite significant. These stats for Miyako is quite significant as well. However, the investment is going to be quite high considering you have to actually juice her out completely to be able to get the dodge 23. All right, so that's all well and nice. Let's talk about Ilya next. Now, Ilya is a really, really interesting one. And so for Ilya's skill one, she's going to go from 190% damage to 235% damage. You guys should know what it is, the hammer. I mean, they all do self damage, so it doesn't really matter. But what's going to happen with this bad boy is that it's going to buff her own M attack up to 1300 from 1100 with the UE for 12 seconds. But from a system point of view, nothing is really happening with the self damage. It's not like she's going to get more or less self damage. Except for the fact that when it's at level 30, when her UE is at level 30, she's going to get HP drain, which is really, really nice. However, I believe that at five stars, no UE, she takes less damage from the self damaging component of this skill than she does with UE at level 30. Let that sink in. And so the reason for that is because she is gaining so much attack that she is doing more attack to herself and it's not being offset by the M defense that she's gaining. However, on the other hand, when she reaches 30 M defense, I do believe that she is going to be taking less damage than she was if she was only on uh, level 30 or even without UE. That doesn't actually take into account the HP drain. So I'm pretty sure that even at level 30, she should theoretically come out ahead. And so in terms of medium craft priority, high level priority, I would say if you really need her for CB or PVP, like more so CB, I think that's when you craft this UE. Because to be honest, otherwise, a lot of the other UEs are just unfortunately way higher priority. And as Miss Nyara has described over here, a high level priority, it's kind of like if you do give her the UE, there's a pretty high chance that you do want to get her to max. And actually on that note, as always, shout out to Miss Nyara for this sheet. It's a uh, it's very, very handy. All right, and so with that said, let's move on to Misogi. Last one 
one, unfortunately, she is in the red because she has a low craft priority and a low level priority. And so the reason is because on her skill one, which previously did 80 damage, now 205% damage with UE. And keeping in mind that this only hits the second enemy with the UE, the blind goes from eight seconds up to 10 seconds, but the miss rate goes from 30 down to 20 seconds, which is like, bruh. So the reason that Yuki and Maho's blind is so good is because it's at like 60 or 70%. Misogi's was at 30% and now it's going down to 20%. Like, I, I don't know how to save this girl, man. But I guess Psy Games at the time, because they gave her an extra effect, thought they might have overtuned her. Uh, clearly, I don't think she has. And so what that extra effect is, is an AOE debuff to P attack by 500 permanently on the second to the center with a radius of 200 front and 200 back. And so unfortunately for Misogi, there are just too many units that are way better. Like for example, she's in the front position, she's going to get cleaved into shits. And if you want to bring like some level of debilitation, if you want to screw over the other opponent, you'd rather take Misaki, who is slowing their action speed by 35%. Because so slowing action speed is like a guaranteed debilitation. It is guaranteeing that you're going to screw over the team. It's a soft CC. And a lot of the time, especially in PvP, it's the action speed that is really going to determine the winner of a match. For Misogi and her debuff, it's kind of like, okay, I throw a bomb at you and then you do less damage, but like you're still going to do damage and you're still going to like get your skills off and all of that. So it doesn't stop like the Tsumugi Yubi and stuff like that. Whereas Misaki could actually stop Tsumugi Yubis if we slow her down enough and then we like kill her before she does it. And so yeah, I think you guys can tell I'm very, very impressed, especially with these two characters because their UEs have actually transformed them insanely. Mimi goes from a single target unit who is okay to an AOE nuka. And then Misaki on the other hand is essentially putting the enemy team into wheelchair Comparing that to units like Kyoka, where she's kind of just like just doing more damage, you can see why I favor Mimi and Misaki so much. However, my dudes, that is going to be the end of the evaluation and the end of the video. So you guys already know what time it is. Let me know if you have saved up enough shards to unlock all three of these units and let me know how many of those heart shards you have down in the comments below. I want to see how well you guys are coping. I'm at about like 230, I think. I refresh so much. And so my guys, if you do end up leaving a comment down below, I would really, really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. And if this video did kind of help you or was kind of entertaining, please consider a like, a subscribe, and the notification bell on. But otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, as Misaki once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh!